Hello YouTube, Devin here again, and I have a uh, special video uh, requested by Javier Martinez. He believed that uh, the Soviet steel helmets stopped with the SSH-68. And he's sort of right, but there was two iterations of the SSH-68 after the steel one. And uh, you're looking at the heavier of the two right here. And this is a what I'd like to call a hybrid helmet because it has a steel outer shell and what the Russians call an SVM inner shell which is an aramid fiber, a specific weave of aramid fiber, it's pretty much Kevlar um, but this helmet was uh, came about because after the fall of the Soviet Union uh, the Russian Federation inherited the vast majority of the Soviet military except for the Soviet military, obviously, in other countries, such as, like, Kazakhstan and, and Poland and stuff like that. that. That became part of the Polish military. But the Russian Federation inherited a massive portion of the Soviet military and lacked the ability to properly equip them for modern war. So, to kind of prove that, they're still playing catch-up in the fact that they still issue Russian... Uh, they still issue just plain steel helmets now. Even in 2017, they are still phasing out steel helmets. So, but this is something that kind of came about as like a trying to update the army in the most cost-effective way possible. And what they did was, is they took the old SSH-68 shells, so just the three largest sizes, so they, they ditched the small one, and you'll see why, and uh, they ground the rivets off, and they put in screws and dome nuts, which are what these are, because they don't look like rivets, if you can tell. Get a close up on one screw and a dome nut. So, and what they did is they took the three largest liners and they, they gutted them. And uh, there's two versions there's the SSH 68M and the SSH 68N. And this is the N, all right. And the difference is, is the M it has a thicker aramid shell on the inside and has a different suspension system. Uh, an updated suspension system, whereas the M has a thinner aramid liner and has pretty much the same suspension as the original just steel SSH-68. And I've seen them with two and three point chin straps. It really depends on what year they were made. But they were all made by a Russian steel company called Ni Stali. And they made a lot of the original aramid helmets too like in the 90s like the 6b7 which is the first ever russian fully aramid helmet and the uh p7 which is pretty much a 6b7 you could use a phone with um but these came out in the late 90s early 2000s as a cost of say uh, a cost saving measure to try to use old technology to update it to modern standards and it worked pretty well because they made a this is one ungodly heavy helmet but it's it's incredibly effective and it's incredibly useful because you get the benefits of both having a steel helmet and an aramid helmet so you get the the effects of the steel such as the weather resistance and um the ability to deflect shots away so like projectiles tend to bounce off steel shells especially the ssh 68 design because if i rotate it you can see it has on all sides it has a pretty aggressive slope but uh even more so on the front it has this uh aggressive slope and well that'll that'll deflect shells away from the user as well as having an inner shell that has all the absorbing and trauma bonuses of airmen so if a round does happen to penetrate or just hit really hard, like let's say it's a big round, and it hits the shell and it's enough to deform or crack the steel, the aramid can still catch all the particles and stop the deformation process into your skull. Um, now, this uh, is the um, 68N version, and the difference is, is the 68N is used by the Ministry of the Interior, and the 68M is used by the actual Russian Federation military. So you'll see the N, which is this model, used by um, border guards. You'll see them used by uh, SWAT teams. You'll see them used by the FSB and uh, stuff like that. Like they're, and, you know, people that aren't essentially going to be on the front lines they expect will have one of these. A lot of tankers have these and stuff like that too. Uh, I've seen tankers with the N and the M models. Um, but 
And uh, don't mind this rubber rim. This is just to keep it, uh, because the Russians have this weird thing where instead of actually putting an edge on their helmet, they just put like a plastic covered piece of cloth. I'm just trying to keep the helmet intact more. Uh, so this keeps that from wearing through that piece of cloth is all that this rubber's doing. It doesn't normally come on it. But just, if you've seen in any of the SSH series of helmets, it's it's pretty much the same shape. And uh, uh, here, I'll pull it up so you can take a look at what I mean. Uh, you can see that kind of just piece of cloth. And this is just to keep that piece of cloth nice. So take a look at the liner here. And here you can see the, the different individual layers that are kind of sprayed in here and laid in here and what they they used is they instead of like using what the americans use the americans use like five inch wide squares and they layered them over to the desired thickness to make their helmets these use like one inch wide by like five inch long strips kind of like paper mache to do it and it ends up if you alternate them so if you do like one layer vertical and the rest horizontal it ends up actually having more integrity than the squares do and um this has a leather liner a plastic chin cup and black nylon three-point chin strap now the chin strap is stuck to the shell here at these two two points so but then it's connected at the back to the liner and here you can see you could pull pull it away from the shell and this is a very good design because it, it it's kept the SSH 68's little arms to keep a um, to keep the suspension system away from the shell, which helps keep the shock and the, uh, from the impact from transferring into your head because it gives you an air cushion and it gives the suspension a little bit of uh, wiggle room between your head now. So we'll show you. Here's the stamp, and you get a lot of Russian helmets like this where it's essentially just a paper sticker with pen and ink on it and it's actually written like a lot of helmets you see like this don't even actually have this kind of stamp in it they will just be like handwritten right on the inside of the shell but this has an actual stamp and uh, you see the the purple ink proof mark and uh this is helmet number 21 so that's a two and a one so and you can see the the writing there zoom out a bit so it focuses there you go see that's his that is the abbreviation for ssh-68 n is what it would be in english but it's uh cw-68 h in russian so but that's just because their letters are all backwards and effed up so but this is a very comfortable very stable helmet actually uh it's very adjustable it's very comfortable uh it is incredibly heavy though it would wear you out quite fast, which is why I see a lot of people I like, get a lot of stationary jobs using this. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, tankers and uh, personnel uh, carrier drivers have a lot of these. Because um, the people that get the actual like full Aramid ones uh, that are lighter use those on the front lines. So these are being gradually replaced by the SSH, uh, not the SSH, the 6B7-1M and the 6B47. Those are Russia's two new standard helmets that they're trying to get to everybody. But these are going to sit around for a while before they're fully phased out because they're still using just the steel shell version. So just the plain SSH 68, they're still using those even here in 2017. So... But this, this is, uh, chin strap is held on just a piece of Velcro and it routes through that buckle. So you adjust the, uh, chin strap sideways like that. And here's the crown pad, which is a piece of foam sandwiched between two pieces of leather. And you adjust that here between the four straps. They loop through the pad and you adjust the tightness right here with this knot. So how high it sits up on your head is adjusted by that knot. So, and then to adjust the actual sweatband, you see this kind of raised portion of leather here see, like there's an end and there's an end right here where this kind of white line is there and that's underneath this this is just velcroed in the back underneath this you could adjust this circumference wise so it's a it's actually a pretty adjustable helmet they only come in like two sizes size one and two which would be sizes two and three of just the regular steel shells so but uh, this one's actually in pretty good condition. It's unused. Uh, the liner rivets that connect the little steel arms to the shell are kind of rusting away a little bit. So I'll, I'll have to seal all those up a little bit and I'll, I'll spray some um, 
sealing down there so some clear coat so they don't rust anymore i just haven't got around to doing that yet um but all in all it's a it's a very very good helmet it was a very very cheap design a very very quick fix uh for the russian military to adopt this um compare it now to ach size large ach as you can see uh the ach is a lot wider than this uh the ssh 68 is a little bit taller just pay no attention to the surefire and shit on it i didn't want to take that off so i would rather have this liner though this style of liner uh because i i really don't like the ach pads because they get too hot in hot weather and they don't stick to the velcro discs on the inside and they're too hard in cold weather um it's not very nice i don't like how they transfer a lot more shock to your head than this too and this design is going to last a lot longer because you have to change these pads every six months regardless of use um, this chin strap is also going to last a lot longer because instead of being fabric, um, like this one, uh, the ACH has a leather and fabric chin cup and stuff like that. This is just plastic, so you can sweat in this all you want and it won't stink and everything, but this one, this one will. So, so I really like this. This is about two kilograms though, I think is what it, Yeah. Two kilograms. This weighs about two kilograms, which is a lot. It's heavy. It's very heavy, even for modern helmet standards. But it'll stop really, really high-level threats. So, the thing is, Russians design their helmets a lot better than the Western world does. The Western world, their pretty much standard is 9x19, nine so like 9mm parabellum is what the ACH is rated to stop. This is rated to stop the six, uh, seven point six two by twenty five Tokarevron, which is about twice as powerful um, as the nine millimeter Parabellum that's used by the Western world. So this is this is not because it's a heavy round. The reason that makes the Tokarev the seven point six two by twenty five Tokarev round so lethal is because it's such a smaller bullet with that much more velocity behind it. It has. It's just a very, very hot little cartridge. So, they're better. The Russians designed their helmets to stop that threat, which makes them about 70% better uh, protection-wise than Western World helmets. So, I, li I like that a lot, but you usually have to sacrifice that for weight. And when I do a video on the 6B47 here, I'll, I'll weigh my ACH and the 6B47, which are direct competitors uh, to each other. And I'll show you the difference because the 6B47 is about half as much as an ACH. And it's kind of scary how the Russians are making helmets cheaper, uh, lighter, and more effective than us. Which is kind of makes you wonder why don't we do that kind of stuff with our troops. And it really comes down to how much do you care about them. But I'm not going to open up that whole can of worms. And I don't want to start an argument in the comments with you guys about who's got the best shit and yada yada yada. Uh, this is pretty much just to get information out there. And uh, I hope... Uh, Javier, I hope you watched this video and you liked uh, this version of the SSH 68 because it's my favorite version of the SSH 68. Again, these were made around 2000, uh, late 90s, early 2000s by Nice Dali. They converted a lot of them over. So if you wanted to get one, you can find them out there. Um, they don't come on the market very often, but you can find them on eBay every now and then if you just uh, are looking for them. If you just type in SSH-68, they should... They should be in there. You're going to have to scroll past all the steel ones, but you can you can find them around. So, And they're usually like this, pretty much brand new. Uh, you can really only find the ends, which is this one, which is the better one, in my opinion, anyways. Because uh, the M's are a lot rarer, and normally those are just being discarded kind of as they, they break. Uh, the uh, Russian army tends to just toss them, whereas these tend to not get used as much, so there's a lot more of these around. So, with that, I'll... I'll pretty much leave the video here and hopefully you guys enjoyed it and if you're looking looking to see anything else i know javier wanted to see another russian helmet but i'm only going to do one a day because i don't want to blow through them all um i usually try to do a couple on the weekends because uh i don't get to do that many during the week so but hopefully this is a rare treat for you javier and you, and you like it and maybe you'll track one down someday and everything like that uh they're very nice they're very cool to have they're very nice conversation pieces because a lot of helmet collectors don't even know these exist uh because people didn't know about them until the mid 2000s really when russia kind of started appearing in the media again after the fall of the the soviet union that they started to get more of their military on out on out onto the media so 
A lot of people don't know about these. Nobody really knows they're out there and uh, they're getting progressively harder to find. So with that, I'll leave it here. Leave a like, leave a comment uh, with anything else you want to see. If you want to see any other videos, I just got a really cool hiking pack today. So if you get enough comments saying you want to see that, I'll show you it. It's pretty cool. Um, I do. I got tons of boots and I got tons of body armor and shit too if you want to see that and gas masks. So uh, leave a comment if you want to see any of that stuff. Um, Till then, I will see you in the next video. Bye.